uh, look down in verse number 22. That's for kidnapping, right? Verse number 22, we're going to see God's protection of the unborn. Verse number 22, the Bible reads, If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. Now, why does it matter what the woman's husband says? Because the woman's husband is the father of the child, and he has authority over his, you know, that's obviously something that's very personal to him, but it also just goes to show the, that it's not just the state that's involved here. It's not just the government. I mean, the father's involved here because he was the one that, that, that had um, his child killed. Now, when it says here, no mischief, it basically is, is, is another way of saying that it wasn't intended. It wasn't premeditated. It was an accident, right? So when they say, okay, something bad happened, someone, uh, a, a woman gets, gets, unfortunately, someone knocks into her and then a child that's in her womb dies. If, if no mischief, if it wasn't intended, he says, there's still a punishment. Why? Because it's a life, because somebody died, because it's not just a fetus. It's not just whatever term you want to put. It's not just a group of cells. There's a living human being inside of that mother's womb. And there's a soul in that womb. And we don't believe this ructardation that says that a person's not a person until they breathe their first breath or whatever it is. That nonsense. They don't have their soul until they breathe. That's ridiculous. Okay, God forms and fashions people in the womb. And they exist. They have souls. And that's why the Bible says here in verse 23, If any, man, if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. Because the only balance to that justice... If someone intended to kill the child in a mother's womb, he says, you give life for life. So yes, the life of the, of the adult person that killed the child, the value of their life holds the same value of the life that's in the womb. It's not a lower life because, oh, it's not even born yet. Oh, it, it needs all this, this help to be able to be sustained and to live. And you know, it doesn't matter. The life growing inside of a womb that can't survive outside of the womb has just as much importance as the life of a person that's in a hospital that's on life support that whose body can't function to keep itself alive. They hold the same value because they're both alive, because they're both people, because they're both created by God. Amen. Okay. If any mischief follow, they should give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. So it doesn't matter. Burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Whatever happens to a child, we're going to mete out the same punishment against the person responsible for that. Why is this important? Well, why is this important? It's because we have people whose job is to go and murder babies and to go into the womb and kill and murder innocent life. And according to our laws, it's legal. No problem with it whatsoever. The Bible says you give life for life. And if we had a biblical government, these stinking abortion doctors down at their abortion clinics ought to be put to death. Amen. They ought to be hung up high and shot because they are the most despicable people on this planet. How can a person go in to the most defenseless creature in the world, a, a living human being inside of a womb, and go in with tools and utensils and, and stamp out that life, you wicked, murderous, you know, filthy person. You deserve the death penalty. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches. And, you know, God cares a lot about the children. God cares about the innocent blood. When innocent blood is shed in the land, and we get this teaching, I don't know if I went over this very much, over the death penalty aspect, when I preached on the whole, all the crimes of death penalty, God requires blood. When blood is shed, especially when innocent blood is shed, God requires that blood be shed. And you know what? If it doesn't happen, if that justice isn't executed, God's going to make sure that justice comes down. And you know what? If God has to come down and execute the judgment, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pleasant. It's not going to be fun. And a lot of people are going to be impacted by that. 